You know why I'm excited about this? Because for all the things we can talk about with Phil Ford, we probably need at some point for you to really talk about how much you despised Phil Ford as a kid. Oh, I did. No, I did. Because I, I, I grew up. <laughs> But can we get Phil on? Is he ready to roll? I'll tell him the story. Now, now, Phil, Phil joined me last week on radio with Dan Dockett. So we're, we're going, he's going to hear us a lot of these same questions. But nevertheless, a lot's changed since last week. But I grew up a huge NC State fan, and I was in Greensboro the night old Dean Smith did this. We're going to this, and old Twelve's got the ball, and NC State could have put nineteen guys on the floor, and they couldn't have stopped them if they wanted to. And as a kid, nope. I was like, man, that Phil Ford, I do not like that Phil Ford. I don't like him at all. If I ever meet the guy, I swear to God, I don't know what I'd do. But that Phil Ford is an NC yeah. State kid growing up. Man, he was a problem. He was a yeah. real and problem. Because that four corners, I was swore, I mean, with Ford with the middle, with the ball, and Dean Smith holding up four fingers, game's over. Yeah. Game is stinking over because hey. you could not defend the man with the ball. Couldn't do it. All right, here's the bottom line. Once again, the final, Carolina 70, NC State 66, oh, is our it. happy final at the Greensboro Coliseum. And Mark Packer goes to Billy after the game. Can you believe what just happened? And Billy said, get in the car, Mark. Let's go He home. did. I said, I, and <laughs> I said, it, Billy, <laughs> could we not change the rules? It's got to be – we got to outlaw the four corners because That's, you cannot yeah, defend yeah. it. <laughs> with that guy, and he's a freshman for crying out loud, or a sophomore, or whatever it was. Uh, we got to put up with this for freshman. four more years. Freshman. Hey, this is impossible yeah, to it. deal with Phil Ford. Impossible. Oh, hey, now see Phil. Here's here's the beauty of this, Phil. We're almost <clears throat> we're almost fifty years later, and Pack has still not gotten over it. That's the best <laughs> part of this whole thing. At least we're friends now. So that that's, that's right. That's right. We're 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 on speaking terms now. We can we can yeah, live with it. Right. All right, listen, uh, you, you, I said you joined us last week on radio when all this broke with Roy, and I know that you, you probably had a chance to let this marinate for a couple days. Uh, are you still surprised? I mean, or is it one of those things, hey, you know what, it's made his mind, it's time to move on to the next chapter of Tar Heel basketball. Maybe it's a combination of both. Well, of course I'm surprised because Roy was in such good health. Uh, he's still arguably the greatest coach coaching basketball right now. Uh, he still loves Carolina. He still has his energy. Uh, as I said earlier, the first thing that I thought about when I heard it, well, not only being an April Fool's joke, but I hope it's not health related. Uh, I hope it's not something that he has to do because of some serious health situation he's going on. But he doesn't have that. And if anyone deserves to retire and enjoy life uh, for what he's done for our school, and as I always say, you know, when you talk about the greatest coaches ever, it's not necessarily being named the greatest coach ever. It's just being in the conversation. And Coach Williams is, is in that conversation. And we're just fortunate to have two people that are in that conversation that have coached at our school. And, mm. um, we're going to miss him on the sidelines, but I look forward to seeing him at games and around Chapel Hill. <laughs> Phil, the other issue that has developed here, and I just talked about it with Jenny Levy, uh, you'd be hard pressed. I mean, you're on the list now because there are not many people in this world that have the passion and loyalty for the University of North Carolina like Roy Williams or Phil Ford. Uh, the place means a lot to you. It meant a lot to you when you were there as a player. It's meant a lot more to you, I think, postscript. But the idea of the passion and loyalty he had to Chapel Hill, and, and for both of you, a lot because of Coach Smith, it, it just – it filled the room last Thursday at the Smith Center with that. Well, it really did. You know, I mean, I've, uh, you can imagine how my phone has been ringing and so many former players. I bet I've talked, spoken to Charlie Scott 20 times <laughs> since that <laughs> day. Mm -hmm. and, you know, Cupjack and Walter and Houston and Hanners. And, you know, it's just, uh, it, it's just surprising. You know, it's just like when Coach Smith stepped down. We didn't see it coming, but, yeah. you know, you know I, I'm the type of person that, I look at it as how fortunate we are to have had him as our coach. And I'm blessed and I'm grateful that he coached us. And, um, you know, three national titles, over 900 wins. And what gets me is people don't really talk about what's more impressive to me is his winning percentage. You know, the guy hardly lost. Mm -hmm. And, uh, man, whoever steps in those shoes, you're talking about some huge shoes to fill. 
You know, I call him Judge Roy Bean, and I, I can say that now that he's not the coach because he's a tough cookie man. <laughs> and and uh, stepping his shoes yeah. is, is going to take a huge fan, a huge job, huge person I, to do that. Phil, with that said, and it's all speculation. I mean, nobody knows other than Bubba Cunningham and the assorted few folks who are doing the search here. Um, I know in a perfect world, you'd love to keep this in the family, but really at the end of the day, the object's to get the best coach, period, regardless of where they're from. Well, you know, Wes, Mark, you guys know me and how much Coach Smith meant to me in my life. And uh, I, he has so many sayings that when life situation happens, I go back to it. He had a saying that it's what's best for the team on the court and what's best for the individual mm -hmm. off the court. And to me, this seems like a, a team situation. You know, we have to do what's best for Carolina basketball. Now, you know, I have a lot of friends, you know, guys I consider brothers and little brothers that are in the coaching field now in Carolina. And I would love to see them as a, as the coach, but again, it's up to coach. It's up to Bubba Cunningham. You know, coach Williams always said mm -hmm. that, uh, Every man can grill a steak, design a golf course, and coach a basketball team. You know, so this is a, a decision that we have to sit back and, you know, let Bubba do his thing. Uh, I'm confident in Bubba, a great guy. You know, he got it right with football. So uh, I think yeah. he'll get it right with this. And I just think it's one of those situations that, you know, sometimes we have to take self out of it and think about what's best for Carolina basketball going ahead. Hey, uh, by the way, I was a little surprised at the uh, press conference on Thursday that Coach Williams started doing a little small pocket impression of Coach Smith. I thought you were one of the few people that was only able to do the impression of uh, Coach Smith, but That's Roy opened up and did a little uh, did a little bit of an impression there the other day. Yeah, I used to do that. That retired when he died, though. I'm not doing it anymore. You know, I don't want to wake up at night and see him standing over me, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh... By the way, we were, hey, we're Phil, well, in we're, all honesty, uh, let me let me follow up here real quick. It, in some ways, last Thursday for Roy and the day Coach Smith retired, they were kind of similar in many respects, Same. didn't you think? I Same. mean, both you know, talked about it's, coaching, both talked about it's not coaching, it's, it's I, I just don't stuff. it doesn't it doesn't fit me anymore. Yeah. And and I think the great coaches do uh kind of get it you know they, they pick up the new things you know that, that are that are going on but you know you got the stuff with the portal you know the the transfers and you know then all of a sudden this likeness stuff is coming in and yeah, kids are a little different but you know i i think roy will always be the right man for for the job at carolina but if he doesn't feel that then you know i respect his feelings but Things are changing. The basketball uh, uh, environment is is definitely going to change. You know, kids can transfer and play immediately. It's uh, it's going to be interesting. Well, you know, we had uh, dear old dad on uh, last week, and when he told the story about John Wooden walking across the court, and it dawned on him, hey, you know what? It, it, I'm done. It, it, the game's changing, and. You know what? It's been a great ride. He told the story by going to the press conference about, you know, coaching my last team has been as satisfying as coaching my first one. And the media didn't really pick up on it at first. When you really think about it, John Wooden did it. Dean Smith did it. Roy Williams did it. They went out on their mm -hmm. terms with a sense of where the game was going. And whether you thought it was right or wrong was really irrelevant. It was in their bones. And you know what? Uh, their initial thought on most stuff when it came to basketball and life – it was pretty spot on when you start talking about John Wooden, Dean Smith, and Roy Williams. And, and when you say that, Mark, I, I don't want people to get the opinion that they couldn't adjust. Right. Uh, because if you think about it, as long as they coach, like Coach Smith, you know, like I tell people, you know, when he first started coaching people, his kids were worried about going to Vietnam. And then toward the end of his career, we were listening to rap music. You know, I mean, two of the different kids. And he adjusted. It's just that I think that those great coaches get to a point in their career, they've done it so long, and they just don't want to change anymore. They think it's time to step away. Hey, because uh, I think if they Phil, last to, thing they from me. Adjust. I didn't know the question yeah. about that. Uh, last thing from me. A um, couple different times on Thursday, 
Roy talked about being scared to not be able to coach and in, in the future. Uh, and and I, I think I know you well enough and know kind of Coach Smith's post-career to know he probably doesn't have as much to be scared about as he thinks because, A, there are a lot of fairways and greens involved in it. Two, there'll be travel that Wanda wants to do. And three, I, I think he's – I think he's written a pretty good legacy here. He he can handle this a little bit better than I than I thought he mentioned the other day, right? I do too. I, I do too. I think he put a lot on himself, but that's just Roy. You know, he's he's a humble guy. Uh, he's the type of person that doesn't look at the success he has. Uh, I bet you, Roy, if you ask him about all the games he's won, he probably couldn't tell you. 16, 17, 20 plays, but every game that he lost, I bet you can tell you every play that happened in that game. Mm. And, and that's just the type of yeah. competitor he is. And, you know, like I said, I think last year, you know, the year before last, I mean, with Kobe White leaving, uh, surprising us, uh, kind of left the team, you know, kind of not as talented as he wanted. And this year, I don't know how you coach this year in this environment with the guys not knowing when you're going to play, <laughs> who you're going to play, testing every day. I can't imagine – me as a freshman, as you know, like I when I started off this forward as an Edsel, how bad I started off, you know, trying to become a basketball player uh, in this environment right now. So these last two years, yeah. I think you have to put an asterisk by. Uh-huh. But you know, to me, Coach Williams is in the is in the conversation of greatest coach ever, and the greatest coaches mm. and those coaches in that uh, conversation can adjust to anything that the NCAA uh, sends them. Phil, I swear to God. I have not heard this Ford is an Edsel in an 45 Edsel. years. And when you just said hey, that, I just had a flashback. Terrible, man. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, I just had a flashback <laughs> to my years as an NC State fan thinking, holy oh. mackerel, if only the transfer portal was back then, we could have had Phil Ford wearing red and white. That Carolina thing would have never happened. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, you are something God. else. That's hey, funny. I'm going to uh, – here's what we're going to do. We're going to bookmark this conversation, and somewhere along in the summer, we'll get you back on here because we got a handful of things we need to talk about with you regarding uh, basketball in the mid-1970s so we can okay. exercise some of Packers' demons, okay? Hey, wait a minute. No, wait, no, wait a minute. Yeah. While Phil was talking at one time, there was highlights, and Billy Langlo was trying to run down Phil Ford to block a layup. I'm thinking, let me tell you something. Yeah. The chances of that happening would be a zero. <laughs> hey, let me tell you what. Here it is. Right in, hey, look at Billy look, Langlo. Here it is. Got yeah, no Billy, chance nice stopping try. 12. Yeah. None. Yeah, zero. Really. Hey, Stan uh, Rome. Classic. Stan Rome, watch this one. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. We're rolling that video. Yeah, up 12 was a problem. Holy I'm telling cow. you, 12 was a problem yeah. as a kid. It was a nightmare watching 12 yeah. just, just beat everybody. Oh, look at that was a by the way, Phil, that, that last clip was the red and white of NC State at That's Carmichael. Right. That was a pretty that might have been yeah. a pretty good day. We gotta figure yeah. out. Yeah. Transfer yeah. portal yeah. 75. Hey, great to see you. State was a problem. <laughs> no, was not not for yeah, 12, it wasn't. <laughs> not <laughs> Hey, take care, my man. Always All great right, man, to see you. Be you well, guys. okay? Thanks for having me on. All right, bye-bye. You, bye. you, hey, no, our pleasure. The great Phil Ford.